morning. It is September 14, 2022. <coughs> I, am, I have assumed the position on the ground where I like to shoot. And I've been training myself to shoot further forward as I learned on several YouTube channels. I've been shooting back too far. And I think that this will, this should result in some better kills. And I'll show you when I get up there what I'm talking about. Since I was bow hunting as a teenager, I always thought you hit the deer essentially center of the body. Well, I guess everybody knows guts are back toward the rear. That might be a little high there. I'm going too high and I know why I'm going high because I'm thinking in my mind that the leg bone goes straight up it doesn't go straight up it goes up and then goes toward the front of the deer As I said in my recent video, archery is a sport. And I'm beginning to realize that for me anyway at my age, the demand to get in the woods and kill a deer and that you're not a success if you don't kill a deer and so forth and so on, that's actually taking away from the enjoyment of it from me. I got in a stand yesterday, a tripod stand. It's not a very high stand. And I was sitting up there, uh, right here on the farm. I didn't see any deer. It was under a persimmon tree. And I got a cramp in my right leg. I mean a big cramp. I get them from time to time. And I'm up there in this stand with a cramping leg. So I decided I better get out of that stand. So I did, and it was not easy. Uh, there was a potential of getting hurt uh, that way. So I got down and I went not very far and found me kind of a bushy place and I sat down just like this right here. And I'm pretty sure if a deer had come out, I'd have been in just as good a position there as I would have. And like I said before, you're not going to fall off the ground. I used to do a lot of stupid stuff when I was young. I was just as breakable when I was young also. I decided that I had to fly airplanes one time and took flying lessons. Flew around solo some, did some cross country solo, stuff like that. But looking back on it now, I honestly didn't know what I was doing. <coughs> I used to, f got into hang gliding back in those days. rode motorcycles real fast, stuff like that. Looking back on it now, I took some big chances. I 
it's God protected me. Maybe I was just lucky. But at this stage of the game here, it's about enjoyment of your sport. I enjoy this right here. You know, when you hunt all the time, you don't hardly have any time to shoot your bow. I used to think about it when I was younger that we would practice and practice. And then once hunting season started, we hardly drew a bow. I can draw, I can draw a hundred arrows right here and enjoy. And if I was waiting on a deer, I'm not saying that I don't want to wait on a deer. I'm just saying the pressure to succeed at killing this animal, I believe in some cases, takes away from the enjoyment of the sport. Okay, there's two different reasons to kill a deer. One is the sport of it, and one is you're hungry and you need food. Very few people are bow hunting for food. What are you bow hunting for? Okay, I see these videos where these guys are out there. Killed monster buck. They get obsessed with this one buck. I've seen several of them lately. They find this monster buck and they just become obsessed with killing it. Why? There's only one reason, that's to show it to somebody. I noticed this years ago. If you want food, you're gonna be better off with a doe. And they're easier to kill. This monster buck didn't get that way by being stupid. He, he was hard to mess with. <clears throat> and I wondered years ago, if there was, if I was the last man on earth, and I could hunt anywhere, and the deer would be almost tame. I could kill anything. Would I do it? Would I hunt a monster buck? Well, why would I? There'd be nobody to show it to. Might want to think about that. I'm not saying that you shouldn't shoot a monster buck if he runs up under you. Why are you doing it, though? most likely to brag about it. It's like these people that I see, I watch a lot of videos. I like to fish too. And there's a fish in the south here called the redfish. And they get, there's a limit on how big, they gotta be like at least 14 inches long. But after they get a certain length, they, they become breeders and you can't catch them. Or, no, you can catch them, but you can't keep them. Because if they kept all of these big giant redfish, those are the breeders they would ruin the fishery, they would kill all the breeders. But there's guys out there catching them, knowing that they can't keep them. And they're out there targeting these giant redfish with particular baits that is going to uh, catch the big ones, knowing that they can't keep them. So they bait it up with this big piece of cut bait, big huge cut bait, and they have certain techniques, and they can hook these giant redfish. <coughs> Some of them can weigh 50 pounds. They fight them, fight them for a long time, maybe an hour, drag them up from the depths and wear them out, and then get them up, take a picture of them, and then they have to turn them loose. And then they have to put they put them down in the water and they try to revive them and all that. Sometimes that the redfish gets a hook down in the 
throat and swallows it and it actually is going to kill him. Yeah, they use circle hooks that make it better, you know. Well, why would you catch a giant fish, and I mean target a giant fish, when you know you can't keep him, and you know you're going to hurt him? That's going to hurt that fish. A certain percentage of those fish are going to die when you turn them loose. It's something to think about. If I'm going to catch a fish, and I guess I'm saying I'm better than those guys, and I know that's wrong. I'm not better than anybody. But, it seems like it would be more reasonable to target the ones that you're going to be able to keep. <coughs> that's, that's what I got to say about it right now. That's the way I feel about these giant bugs. But then again, there's another way to look at it. Those giant bugs are going to die in the next few years and lay on the ground and rot and you're not going to get any good out of them. So there is another way to look at it. All right, that's my rant. Whether or not this makes it to YouTube, I don't know. But I'll get in the house and look at it. I've got the sun shining straight in my face right now. It feels very good. Probably looks like holy hell, but it feels good. All right, this is Gardener Israel, signing off. All right, here we are out in the shop, in the woodworking shop. And I told you that I was going to throw my net and uh, see if I could catch some fish that might be the type of fish that are destined for the kingdom of God. This is a, a verse from the Bible. It's Matthew 21, 44. And I got that from the Geneva Bible. And whosoever shall fall on this stone, he shall be broken. But on whosoever it shall fall, it will dash him to pieces. The stone is... The rooster wanted to add his part. The stone is Yeshua, the Messiah, otherwise known as Jesus Christ. And what he's saying is when, when you fall on him, he will break you. That is, when you accept him as your Savior, he will break you from the flesh. He will break you from your pride. And it may hurt. But on whomsoever it shall fall, that will be the stone, that would be the judgment. It will dash him to pieces. So your whole existence will be broken into pieces. Beautiful scripture and a beautiful sentiment. You can look Need to look it up, Matthew 21, 44, in your Bible. This is Gardener Israel. I hope that I can talk to you again.